Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 54. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, it is a new year, uh, but around the first of the month, every, every month, we try to do this video where we talk about the fair value logarithmic regression trend line for the entire cryptocurrency asset class. And as of January 1st, 2025, the fair value is approximately 3.267 trillion, whereas the overall market cap right now is around 3.371 trillion. So this still represents a slight overvaluation of about 3%. But it is still playing out in a somewhat familiar fashion, as we have seen historically Bitcoin and the entire crypto asset class goes through periods of overvaluation and then undervaluation. Now, if you look at, at the last few cycles, if you start off with this cycle back over here, it went durably overvalued in February of the post having year. If you look at the cycle after that, it went durably overvalued in April of the post having year. If you look at this last cycle back in 2020 and 2021, it went durably overvalued in November of the having year. So right now, we're still sitting just around the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. It's hard to say if this is the move which leads to that more durable overvaluation that then lasts for another year or two. But it could be. Um, note, it, it is always possible that you get sort of a, um, a, a drop back below the fair value uh, before you then see it really go durably overvalued. It doesn't have to play out like that. And in fact, in 2016, it didn't, right? Once it went overvalued, it just didn't really look back. But if you do look at the other two cycles, you can see there was a sort of a, a brief period of overvaluation and then back down and then slight overvaluation even in, you know, in the having year and then one last sell-off before it really geared up for a more you know longer period in the overvaluation range. And then if you look at last cycle, it did something kind of similar where it first went overvalued, came back down, went slightly overvalued, one final shakeout, obviously pandemic, uh, and then it really took off. So if you do see it come back below the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, like if you see it come back into this region, it probably would represent an opportunity if it in fact occurs. But again, right now, the asset class is about 3% above the fair value. And it's interesting because, you know, the asset class, the total market cap now is over 3 trillion, which is basically where it was, you know, way back over here at, at the prior peak uh, in the last cycle. But last cycle, when we hit that peak, the fair value was only 700 billion or so. But you fast forward three years, and now the fair value, quote unquote fair value, is closer to 3 trillion, right? So, you know, if it were to go back below 3 trillion, that would be considered an under, that would make it undervalued, right, with respect to the fair value log and the congressional trend line. And the reason this is even a thing that I track is because the idea is that, you know, the longer time goes on, the more people sort of get onboarded to the asset class. Therefore, the asset class overall should continue to grow. Um, this sort of represents, you know, maybe the adoption curve. Um, I, I tend to follow more sort of the logarithmic uh, regression view rather than some of the more optimistic views. Uh, but this, to me, seems like it... it, it generally has, has tracked the best. So that's where I stand. If you overlay the summary risk metric, which accounts for Bitcoin price, on-chain data, and social data, this is what it looks like, kind of gives you an idea of where we currently are in the current market cycle. And you can see sort of these periods of overvaluation and undervaluation. Historically, you know, you, during periods of undervaluation, Bitcoin dominance goes up, right? So alts bleed back to Bitcoin, once you go durably overvalued, that's usually when Bitcoin dominance can actually start to go down. And that's why it's important to track this stuff, because if you want to see Bitcoin dominance go down at some point in 2025, it would likely really only do so 
once the asset class uh, becomes, you know, more overvalued compared to the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. <coughs> now, if you take the percent difference between the total market cap and the fair value, you get this chart right here. And, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about, how like in the 2016, 2017 cycle, once it went overvalued, it didn't really look back. Um, but if you look at the other two cycles, you can kind of see going above the fair value a few times. And then on the third attempt, really durably breaking through. And then last cycle, kind of something similar, right? One attempt, the second attempt, and the third attempt really got through. So we'll see if that plays out again um, as it has in, in prior cycles or if it if it just plays out like the 2016 cycle. There have been a lot of similarities between this cycle and the, uh, and the 2016 cycle. In fact, if you were to look at the ROI from the low uh, this cycle and just compare it to, to the 2016 cycle, I mean, you can see they, they do match fairly well. Um, in fact, the ROI from that cycle also saw sort of a local top, you know, a, a, a little bit higher than it currently went and then dropped for about a month or two before continuing, uh, continuing on. But I think that this is, you know, it, it's useful to track this stuff. It's useful to look at sort of the overall view of the asset class to give you sort of the, uh, the the higher level view because it's easy to get lost in the weeds of the everyday movements in the market but i like to go back to this uh to give me an idea of of where the asset class is and again i mean the the, the hope <coughs> the goal i think is is for the asset class to hit 10 trillion uh eventually plus or minus a few trillion as we go to sleep at night we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion dollars among friends see you guys next time bye